Thank you, Mike. Greetings, welcome one and all to the inclusive community of Christ that extends beyond the walls of any sanctuary. I am overjoyed to share this ministry with you as we seek to build up Christ's heavenly commonwealth on earth. Our theme today is, who do you say that I am? Who do we say that Christ is? The historical Jesus gathered a large following of disciples. The inner core covenanted to turn their lives in a different direction, throwing off worldly convention and concerns, following instead a spirit-led path. These disciples did not expect Jesus to be killed by the Romans, and when he died, they were left to question why it happened. Who was Jesus? And when the disciples, beginning with the apostle Mary Magdalene, experienced visions of the risen Jesus, they were again forced to ask themselves, who is Jesus? The different communities of early Christians wrote the question into their sacred stories, their Gospels of Jesus. In saying 13 of the Gospel of Thomas, we read, Jesus said to his disciples, compare me to something and tell me what, I'm, what I am like. This is a variant of our theme, who do you say that I am? In that Gospel, we read that Simon Peter said to him, you are like a just angel. Matthew said to him, you are like a wise philosopher. Thomas said to him, teacher, my mouth is utterly unable to say what you are like. Who do we say the historical Jesus was? Who do we say the Jesus Christ of Scripture is? How do we understand the word Christ? as a community, when we take upon ourselves Christ's name, when we pray in Christ's name, and when we seek to become Christ's body in the world. Let us contemplate these questions together and ponder our own convictions as we set this time aside for the sacred. We'll begin that by going live to Independence, Missouri, where Twyla Ryder will read our call to worship. Welcome to Beyond the Walls, Twyla. Thank you, John. Good morning to everyone. Our call to worship comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 11, verses 21 through 27. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord. I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. Amen. Amen. And I invite you all now to join with the Beyond the Walls Choir in singing our opening hymn, number 23, I Danced in the Morning. Oh, 
and they would not follow me. I danced for the fishermen for James and John. They came with me and the dance went on. Dance then wherever you may be. I am the Lord of the dance, said he, and the I want to thank everyone who shares their voice each week with the Beyond the Walls Choir, including this week, Dave Nelson, who joins us for the very first time from Independence, Missouri. We go now live to Kitchener, Ontario, where Brian Schantz will offer our invocation. Brian, welcome to Beyond the Walls. Thank you, John, and it's good to be with everyone. Heavenly creator of the universe, Thank you for sending your son to this earth to teach us how to pray. I offer this prayer in the name of Jesus. Yesu, Yesu, you told us to watch and pray always to avoid temptations. I dedicate this prayer to those who are feeling temptations or are in temptations. You know our thoughts, and I pray in your name that you will cleanse us all from any thoughts that would lead us into temptations. Yesu, Yesu, you told us to pray for our families. You promised that whatever we ask the Father in your name, that if we believe, we will receive. Yesu, Yesu, we have so many that need your healing, spiritually, mentally, and physically. I uphold all families of those in this congregation today who are in need of your blessings, that you might fulfill your promise to those who believe. We know that they will receive. Yesu, Yesu, we know you were lifted up on the cross so that you might draw all people unto you. I pray that we will not take that ultimate sacrifice lightly. I pray in your name that the people watching today will be drawn unto you. Yesu, Yesu, you taught us to follow the things you did while you were on this earth and to do them in our churches. We yearn to follow your examples in all we do. I pray for all our churches for your blessings this day. I pray that this service will be a blessing to all. 
Yesu, Yesu, you gave us your light to guide us through life. You commanded us to let our light shine into the world. We do that today through Beyond the Walls Congregation, reaching out to all corners of the world. This is our light that shines throughout the world this day, proclaiming you as our Savior. I pray that this light will shine into homes that are seeking you and your blessings. May we all hold the sacred light up to our friends and family, that they too can experience your love and your peace. Yesu, Yesu, fill us with your love. Show us how to serve the neighbors we have from you. Amen. Thank you, Brian. And now I'm very pleased that we are going to Pahoa, Hawaii, where Trudy Mahi Gunderson is here to teach our peace lessons. Trudy, good morning, aloha. So we're so happy to have you here with us. Aloha. Thank you, John. Eho mai kaike mai luna mai. O na me ahuna no e ao na mele. Eh ho my, eh ho my, eh ho my, eh ho my, ka ike my luna my, o na me auna no e auna mele, eh ho my, eh ho my, eh ho my, yeah, yeah. Our peace lesson begins with a Hawaiian chant to invite us to be open to the knowledge and sharing we receive today. It is chanted at the beginning of presentations, sharing of knowledge by groups of all ages. We open our minds and hearts, even if it may make us uncomfortable. We work, discuss, struggle, and celebrate together. The peace words of the day are, inclusion, patience, and perseverance. My Hawaiian heritage story speaks and lives with an island focus. Our people learned centuries ago that in order to live and persevere, everything and everyone is needed, treasured, used, and reused. A land management system, the Ahupua'a, was created based on natural ecosystem services. Shared resources from the mountains to the oceans meant food raised in the mountains and hillsides were shared with the fishing villages and vice versa. The rain that falls on the mountain slopes of Mauna Kea at some point reached people living in Kailuakona, Waimea, Hilo, and Kau. Everyone has a kuleana, a responsibility. As Shirley Irina Murray wrote the words to the, for everyone born, there is a place at the table. Island people understand this. Why? Because we cannot drive to another land. It is essential for us to get along, not tolerate. We must find and use the gifts and talents each one brings to the table. Same-sex couples find acceptance and com comfort with their families. As one elder kupuna elder shared with me, what are we going to do? Kick them off the island? This is not the reality show survivor. That is not who we are. It is imperative for us to navigate the pathways of peace and inclusion. Easy? Of course not. Essential? Yes. So the word inclusion also means listening, 
listening with mind and heart. Celebrate with those that are like you. Celebrate and learn from those that are not like you. Modern Hawaii history has seen a diverse group of immigrants to the islands. Many came as pineapple and sugarcane plantation workers. They struggled to adjust to a new place, new surroundings, new language. The newest groups were the targets of discrimination. And as generations passed, they and we learned to be inclusive. Are we still struggling? Yes, at times we are. But with patience and perseverance, we will thrive. Why patience and perseverance? Because we don't get it all at the same time. Some learn faster than others. Some come kicking and screaming. Some need to hear the message many times in many different ways using diverse methods, but we can get it. As Liza Horning said a few weeks ago, don't panic. We are in the same storm, not the same boat. We come in yachts, lobster fishing boats, and my people in canoes. As you listen to today's message, how would you answer the question, who do you say that I am? Is the word inclusive a part of who you are? Can you be patient and persevere? Of course you can. You choose. To this, we say mahalo, merci, gracias, spasibo, danke. Thank you, Trudy. That was beautiful. And who do you say that Jesus is? What is your understanding of Christ? Your testimony may be different from the words of Martha that we heard uh, in our call to worship today. Your relationship to Christ may have changed over the course of your life. You may have more than one answer to the question. You may have doubts or worry that your own sense breaks with orthodoxy. That's okay. That's okay. Don't worry. Who do you say that he is? Can you say who he is in your own words? Let us create a shared testimony, just like we created two shared prayers in the past. Today is shared testimony. Each one of us adding one line, just one line, okay? I invite you to share your understanding of Jesus writing in the chat box of Facebook or YouTube. Te invito a compartir tu forma personal de entender a Jesús. Je vous invite à tous à partager votre compréhension personnelle de Jésus. You can also send us an email at info at centerplace.ca and simply fill in the blank. Jesus, I testify that you are followed by your answer to the question. Once again, I emphasize, please share only one brief answer, okay? Beginning with Jesus, I testify that you are, okay? Jesús, doy testimonio de que eres seguido de tu respuesta. Jesús, je témoigne que tu es suivi de votre réponse. We will publish our shared testimony once we compile all your answers. And if we get more than 50, we'll send it to the Herald. Okay, so we need at least 50, all right? Can we do this? Yes, we can do this. Thank you for this ministry and thank you for coming together once again as the congregation beyond the walls. Thank you for clicking like and thank you for sharing this video because when you do that, 
you're doing invitation ministry. You're drawing the circle wide. You're inviting people to Christ just with a like, just with a share. So, as always, for that ministry, I thank you. Por ese ministerio de compartir este video, te doy las gracias. Por ese ministerio, je vous remercie. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Landro. And now we go to Oklahoma, Michigan, where Sarah Allen will teach our lesson of the Living Church. Sarah, welcome back to Beyond the Walls. Thank you very much. It's lovely to be here with you, all of you. I have chosen for my faith journey to be within the community of Christ. I choose to put my time, energy, talents, and money into this faith movement. I do this because I believe it is the best place that I have found to live out my faith. I have watched over the years as the church has questioned what the future will hold, while also accepting ways that we have lived in the past that have needed adjustments. The fact that this faith movement allows that to happen and gives the room for adjustments to be made fills me with the overall sense of grace that this community professes. It gives us room individually and collectively to manage the fluctuations that occur in our lives. It gives us the room to be able to acknowledge that there is grace in all things, even in those times when we struggle to feel it. I believe this is very important and not found in all faith traditions. I appreciate that we don't know all the answers, but as we journey together, we seek one another for help. This community is vast, and we know we can travel anywhere in the world and look for a community of Christ church and find an instant friend. That also is very unique and an amazing treasure that we can call our own. I believe strongly that if we put ourselves into our communities, and show them the Christ that we believe in, that many others would want the kind of faith journey we have. Our journey is special and powerful. Everything changed for me in sharing my faith when the mission initiatives and enduring principles became available for us to share with others. I was a young adult and it felt good to no longer be discussing our name, but to be able to easily profess what we are about in terms people could understand. I give my money to other charities as well, but I give most of my offering to Community of Christ because this is the community and how this community shares Christ with the world that I want to support. As we learn about the Living Church, we seek to further Christ's mission in the world. We invite you to contribute to the work at seeofchrist.org slash give or at centerplace.ca slash donate. Will you pray with me? Dear God, we come to you at this moment in this time and space where your spirit dwells among us. May we seek your spirit to learn and notice these times when you are guiding us to do your work. May we choose to be active and productive so your work can be done in the world. Bless us in the ways we choose to contribute, and may the financial needs of the church not be a burden, but be a call to action for our people and beyond. In God's most holy name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Sarah. And now we go to Tempe, Arizona, where Pat Marmoy is here to read our lectionary scripture. Pat, it's wonderful to see you. Thank you, John. Good to be here. Our reading today is taken from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 16, verses 13 through 20. Now, when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, 
Still others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my father in heaven. I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he sternly ordered the disciples, do not tell anyone that he was the Messiah. Thank you. And now we go to Whitby, Ontario, where our good friend Roger Dotson is here to preach our sermon. Roger, it's so great to see you. It's always a pleasure to be here with you, John, and everyone. Uh, first, John, um, Jean Garner, who is a member of our church and a good friend, uh, she gave me a call the other day to find out how all my medical tests were. I told Jean that my results from my liver tests came back, that, that they couldn't find anything. My pancreas test results came back, and they couldn't find anything. Then the scope test they did on my stomach came back, and again, that they couldn't find anything. Then my heart stress test and the ultrasound test came back, and they couldn't find anything. Finally, the test that they did on my head came back, and again, the doctor said that they couldn't find anything, that it, there was nothing in my head, that it was completely empty, that there wasn't anything there. So I guess I'm good to go. <laughs> now, the theme for today is, who do you say that I am? When that question was asked to his disciples, what was important of that question being asked was the time and place that Jesus asked that question. There may be no more significant question in all our life than the one that Jesus asked his disciples. When Jesus asked them, but who do you say that I am? When Jesus asked that question to his disciples, Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed this unto thee, but my Father who is in heaven. And I say unto thee, Thou art Peter, Upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt bind up on earth shall be bound up in heaven. And whosoever thou shalt lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. <clears throat> we are so familiar with this powerful teaching that we may miss where that conversation happened and why location was crucial to the teaching moment. <clears throat> when we read the text of the scripture, context is essential. Context literally means that which goes along with the text. For context, let's look again at the beginning of Matthew 16, verse 14. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? Now, seeking context, where was Caesarea Philippi? Caesarea Philippi was a mixed pagan city of Greek, Roman, and Jews, sitting at the crossroad of a major road about 40 miles north of the Sea of Galilee, at the foot of Mount Hermon, the largest mountain in any direction for some 500 miles. At the base of the Mount Hermon 
was a temple dedicated to Caesar Augustus, who had brought peace to the Roman Empire. And he was therefore called the Prince of Peace. The back of the temple opened to a famous spring of water, believed to be controlled by the god Pan. Worshippers would bring a sacrifice to the temple of Augustus and ask the questions of the god, such as, will the harvest be good this year? Or should I enter into a business deal? Or should I get married? Then they would throw the sacrifice into the spring of water if the sacrifice sunk, the god has answered yes. If the sacrifice did not sink, the gods had rejected the sacrifice and the answer was no. So why did Jesus ask, whom do men say that I am in this location? Why didn't Jesus ask the disciples these questions when they were on the shores of Galilee? in just a few verses earlier at the beginning of Matthew 16. Because only at the location of Caesarea Philippi could Jesus make use of the most powerful context of his environment to teach eternal principles. Thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. This statement about Jesus is true no matter where it is spoken. However, what we may miss, because we are not standing with Peter at this location, is that they were in front of a temple dedicated to Caesar Augustus, the adopted son of Julius Caesar. And the Romans considered both of these men to be gods. And now both of these men were dead. What does Peter say and why? Thou art the son, not the adopted son, of the living, not the dead God. Peter made the most powerful contrast possible, and Jesus replied to Peter, For flesh and blood hath not revealed this unto thee. Now remember, context of location, Jesus and his disciples are standing in front of the temple of Augustus, where people sought the will of the gods by flesh and blood sacrifices. Jesus teaches that the spirit confirms the truth, that no one needs an animal flesh and blood sacrifice to learn the truth. Then Jesus says to Peter, upon this rock, I will build my church. Peter's name in Greek and Arabic means rock. So there was a bit of a wordplay with Jesus' statement to Peter about building his church on a rock. What we miss, because we are not standing on location with Jesus and his disciples at Caesarea Philippi, is that the largest rock anywhere for 500 miles is Mount Hermon. And during the two-day journey that Jesus had his disciples make with him from Galilee into Caesarea Philippi, the most unavoidable and indomitable object they were looking at was Mount Hermon. Jesus could have found no greater and more forcible, visible object lesson to teach the truth that his church should be built immovably upon a rock than being standing at the foot of Mount Hermon. That is why Jesus had his teaching moment where he did. How would you personally ask the question that Jesus asked? But who do you say that I am? If Jesus, if you say Jesus was a, a good man who set a good example, that may be nice, but it doesn't necessarily call a person to any radical change. If you say Jesus is the one who will judge us in the end, then it might make you anxious and act out of guilt. 
If you say Jesus is the creator of the universe, manifested in human form to teach us how to live and love, you might feel more inclined to respond with your life. At a very personal level, we probably answer this question differently from others, and even for ourselves at different points in our lives. Because Jesus is also a person, we are in a relationship, and relationship changes over time. Jesus may not, but our understanding of him and the way our relating of him will. Jesus may be your savior, your comforter, your hope, and your friend. We all have to answer crucial questions in life. When we were young, we were often asked, what do you want to be when you grow up? And we could say uh, a policeman, a fireman, a nurse, a doctor, without actually following through. But in time, that what will you want to do with your life question requires a mature, thoughtful answer. Then there's the question that will change your life forever. The one when you get married, when you're asked, will you take this person to be your spouse? Now that is a big question. But there may be no more significant question in all of life than the one that Jesus asked his disciples. But who do you say that I am? We can spend much time speculating about theology. We can study the Bible and look at all sorts of fine ideas about Jesus. We can even become a master of the quest for the historical Jesus. But in the end, each one of us has to answer for ourselves the central question of life. Who do you say that I am? We need to decide whether that Jesus is just a good teacher. We need to wrestle with Jesus' announcement of the kingdom of God and its implications. We need to confront the particular way, peculiar way in which he identified himself with the Lord even going so far as to forgive sins. And then we need to grapple with the meaning of his death and the implications of his resurrection. Only then are we in a position to answer adequately Jesus' question, who do you say that I am? The way we answer Jesus has the potential to change our lives. If we acknowledge Jesus to be a divinely inspired teacher, then we'll pay close attention to what he says so that we might believe it and live it. If we see Jesus as the Messiah, then we will serve him as a God's royal representative who ushers in the kingdom. If we believe Jesus to be the savior of the world, then we will put our ultimate faith in him. And if we confess Jesus to be the word of God incarnate, the very son of God, then we will fall before him in worship so that we might live our entire lives as an offering to him. Jesus revealed who he was through figures of speech, through the seven I am's. And they are, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have light of life. I am the door by me. If any man enter in, he shall be saved. I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and am known of mine. As the Father knoweth me, even so I the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. I am the Son of God. 
I am the resurrection and the life. I am the vine and ye are the branches. Jesus is indeed the Christ, the son of the living God. As Jude wrote, now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to prevent you faultless before the presence of his glory and with exceedingly joy to the only wise God and Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. The presence of God's spirit empowers us to the gift of Jesus Christ, who gave himself freely for us, which enables us to go forth and to serve Christ and to proclaim and share the good news whose resurrection makes new life possible for all. It is this hope that gives us a purpose for a new and better life. It is this hope that frees us so we can look forward to a better future and to walk together in peace and harmony. Even as the Son of Man came not to minister to serve unto, but to minister, to serve, and to give us life a ransom for many. He gave his life a ransom for many. We are all called to serve. And may our actions do the speaking to the question, who do you say that I am? And may the Lord continue to bless you and be with you as we strive to do his will. And when I was writing this message, what came to me was this poem. And I would like to share this poem with you, this message of the poem with you, entitled, Who Do You Say That I Am? Who do you say that I am? I really don't know where to begin. Who do you say that I am? You are my redeemer and my friend. Who do you say that I am? My life has changed because you live. Who do you say that I am? A new way of living did you give. Who do you say that I am? I see things differently because of you. Who do you say that I am? I see the world and people with a different view. Who do you say that I am? You taught me to have compassion for one another. Who do you say that I am? No matter who we are, we are sister and brother. But who do you say that I am? You are the son of God with all the glory. Let us go forth and share and tell the story. And may the love of God be with you from this day forward. Amen. Thank you so much, Roger. Who do you say that I am? I invite you to explore this question with all your mind and all your body and all your soul. The invitation is to explore and not to answer. If you want to answer, you can answer using the chat. But let's leave that aside for a moment. Let's just explore this question. As we do that, insight may or may not come today. But insight comes to us when we are fully aware, fully present, fully relaxed, not when we're trying hard. So take a deep breath. Relax and place this question, who do you say that I am at the center of your awareness?
As you take a deep breath, breathe each word into your life. Who do you say that I am? As you exhale, let the question flow out of your body with your breath. You can say it out loud if that feels right. Imagine the question reaching out to distant places, reaching out to other people's ears. Who do you say that I am? I will recite a poem we heard at the end of the sermon. But remember that your job is not to actively look for the answer. Remember that your job is simply to continue to breathe. So breathe deeply, slowly, gently. Relax your shoulders, your face. And as you do that, there's going to be thoughts, distractions, but just let the thoughts come and go. Like clouds passing by on a clear sky. And let those emotions, those feelings, just rise and fall like the waves. Who do you say that I am? Not looking to answer the question, we let the question be at the center of our being. We allow the question to become one with us. And gently, we let go of everything else. Continue breathing, relax. Breathing in each word. Who do you say that I am? Quién decís que soy? Qui dis-tu que je suis? I really don't know where to begin. Who do you say that I am? You are my Redeemer and my friend. Quien decís que soy? My life has changed because you lived. Qui dis-tu que je suis? A new way of living did you give? Who do you say that I am as you breathe in, as you breathe out? I see things differently because of you. Who do you say that I am? I see the world 
I see people with a different view. Quien decís que soy? You taught us to have compassion for one another. Qui dis-tu que je suis? No matter who you are, we are all siblings. Who do you say that I am? You are the Son of God with all the glory. Who do you say that I am? Quien decís que soy? Qui dis-tu que je suis? Now let us go forth and share and tell this story. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Leandro. I want to thank everyone who has made this ministry possible today. Our technology team, Mary Jean Belrose, Lee Mitchell, Troy Roach, Evan Charlie, our translation team. I want to thank especially today Kahialani, Jolé, and Leandro. Of course, I thank Leandro for uh, his work directing the choir as video director of the service, to Jerry Dale Jr. and Sean Matheson who serve as producers of the service, to Daryl Bellrose who served today as our chaplain for our ministers meeting, and of course for Michael Karpowitz for all of this amazing ministry of music and is serving as the director of our audio. There is one announcement I want to give you for those of you who are in Canada, please mark Saturday, September 25th, down on your calendars, beginning at noon Eastern, we will have our second All Voices Zoom conference. If you're part of our first conference last May, you know that this was an amazing, important experience of discernment not to be missed. And if you've not shared your voice with the Testimony Tapestry, um, you're invited to do so now. You can find that, uh, the way to do that in instructions at www.allvoices.ca. We want to hear all voices as we are discerning across Canada what matters most for the journey ahead. How is God calling us to be communities of Christ in Canada in the 21st century? Again, learn more at allvoices.ca. And now, as we conclude, I invite you to sing with the Beyond the Walls Choir, hymn number 105, All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name.
Magnificent. Once again, I want to thank the choir and Leandro and Mike for this ministry of music. Go forth with the inspired counsel given to the church in Doctrine and Covenants, section 164, verse 90 through F. If you truly would be community of Christ, then embody and live the concerns and passion of Christ. The challenges and opportunities are momentous. Will you remain hesitant in the shadows of your fears, insecurities and competing loyalties, or will you move forward in the light of your divinely instilled call and vision? The mission of Jesus Christ is what matters most for the journey ahead. Amen. Stay with us after the postlude and share in the discussion with our ministers. Thanks, everyone. Amazing, energizing. Wow, I was just <laughs> really um, so uh, fed by all of your ministry today. Thank you so much for being with us and for sharing with our global congregation. Um, I want to thank every single one of you. So we can go ahead and start probably anywhere, but I want to say hi, I guess, to Sarah. Sarah, um, we're so happy that we were able to work it out that you can be back with us and be on the walls. I really appreciated your um, your lesson as you're kind of, I think, what we're trying to do with this is a fairly new thing, you know, which is uh, what we're calling Le Lesson of the Living Church to explain why we're committed specifically to this church because there's all kinds of other wonderful things that we can do to live life meaningfully and i really appreciated um, how you encapsulated it yeah absolutely um yeah I, I mean i just i believe this is where i want to be this is where i've been my whole life and um that's why i mentioned the mission initiatives and enduring principles because that really changed it for me of being able to use that to share with others to 
for why I'm here. Yeah, I love that too. I mean, you know, so I think that one of the things, you know, it, that we spend a bunch of time discerning as a, as a uh, just denomination, which is to say our identity and how, how do we understand who we are. And I think that there was a lot of inward um, processing that happened, but coming out of that are, are, are these things that we can uphold and really, really um, explain to people, you're a 70 and I'm a 70. And so doing these kinds of invitational ministry is like, it makes it a lot easier when we can say what we actually stand for. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And giving terminology that, that can make sense to others, especially those seekers out there or just, you know, the people that, that, you know, are wanting to share Christ with. And it's got to be in terminology that can make sense to people who, who don't know our own terminology. So I think that's what's so special about that, those two things. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, there can be so often, if we're only speaking to ourselves and to the folks in the, in the pews inside the sanctuary, um, we can so easily fall into jargon and we have that, that kind of an issue. Brian, I want to say hi to you and welcome you on to Beyond the Walls. I have my primary interaction with you has been on the board of the Cinito Social Housing, and I've just enjoyed that um, uh, all these years as we work on uh, the problem of uh, housing injustice and homelessness uh, in cities like this one. And it was just wonderful to be able to have you here in Beyond the Walls. I know you're, um, uh, we, we see you on all the time uh, on the on the stream sharing. And so it's wonderful to see your face. Thank you. It was an honor to be a part of this, John. I, this uh, Beyond the Walls worship has blessed me, especially through the early days of COVID. I was also uh, recovering from a knee replacement and I really look forward to the, the sharing and uh, you bring people from all over the all over the world, which is great. And I've been to a lot of those countries like Hawaii, and Tahiti and uh, the Middle East. So it was great to be a part of it. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it so much. Pat, I want to say hi to you. <laughs> Pat, we, Pat, we've been friends for a whole long time, going back to the History Association, John Whitmer, and also the sites, going to the historic sites, and uh, uh, you know, you were volunteering there, and it's and we've stayed with you, and, and I just love when we go visit in, in Arizona, and so anyway, it's it's been such a joy to have you be a part of our Beyond the Walls congregation. Yes, you and Mike were our first house guests at our winter home in Mesa. So that was, uh, yeah, we had actually had to buy a bed so that you could home people. <laughs> well, thank you so much. That's that's going above and beyond hosting duties. You know, it's like, okay, we're going to have guests. we got to buy the bed. <laughs> I must say that, boy, this, uh, um, yeah, the last hymn, uh, All Hail the Power of Jesus Name, really hit me. Because in the the um, you know, the the refrain, I could hear Sam singing the bass part, mm. and um, that yeah yeah he would have sung that really loud. Yeah, I I I I, I also anyway I, I miss him so much. He's such an amazing person, and I'm in this he can be hopefully whisked with us with, in spirit singing the bass part with us as we were all singing it and um and anyway i'm thank you for remembering him to us <laughs> yeah i really have appreciated your ministry john and i i i remember uh, the first meeting of you and when we were up at Kirtland and we went to see um that movie about uh, the killing of the mormons out in on that mountain out in oh right yeah the mountain meadows massacre movie yeah 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 uh, well, <laughs> so thank you for being here with us. I want to also thank Twyla for being here with us. It's uh, it's so wonderful to have you both uh, uh, take part in our our uh, social hour discussions and also uh, with the singing and also just now in, with also in ministry. And so it's it's a delight to have you on the service. Thank you, thank you. Uh, I just say to everybody, come to our social hour on. Thursday nights, we have lots of fun talking about lots of interesting topics. Absolutely, yeah. We had, um, I mean, there was all every, every everything in the in the um, hour last Thursday was everything from both talking about the 
the, essentially the lectionary scripture and the theme for this week. So we talked about that in terms of the who do you say that I am in the kind of the the theology room to in the in the social room. The topic was very off topic. It was like Doctor Who is where it started and it went on from there. And then there was also a, um, a spiritual practices room where there was a meditation and uh and and I, I think that also we have meditation and maybe also prayer concerns and that kind of a thing. But anyway, wonderful meditation and spiritual practices room. And so there, all three of those are possible. So if um, and more, and we're likely to, we're likely to have those. And the more people who keep coming, the more we can add other other kinds of uh, things as we're all sharing together. So I really appreciate your being a part of that and uh, and your invitation to everyone to be part of that. <laughs> Yes, uh, it's lots of fun. So join in. <laughs> <laughs> Trudy, it's such a treat whenever we can have you <laughs> on Beyond the Walls. And I know you have to wake up so early to do it. And, uh, and not all of us are morning people. <laughs> and, <laughs> but, I am not. And so we feel very blessed uh, uh, and special that you have made this special exception for us. Well, it it's totally my honor. And thank you. I'm humbled and when I was preparing it, I thought, John wanted inclusion, inclusion, inclusion. We're an <laughs> island people. We include everybody. <laughs> <laughs> well, the lesson you, you, the last time you were visiting on, and you're on in the service, you just in the, just in the chat here, you actually told that same lesson. And I said, that's a peace lesson. I want you to say that same thing as a peace lesson. And I'm so happy you did it. I just loved it. Oh, thank you. Thank you. And I thought, well, it's interesting because I'm going to be sharing it with the Hawaii people later this morning um, or afternoon, your time. And but it'll look a little different because most of them know the story, you know. But, yeah, yeah. But but I'm, I thought, yeah, you know, not everybody gets it at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> want to get it you know <laughs> well i like that one of the words was patience on that and perseverance <laughs> therefore too so inclusion of yes but there's also we do have to have some patience for each other you know and that's one of the ways that um as a as a community um where, that's one of the ways as a community that where we don't polarize and part and, and break apart is that when we kind of accept okay we're all in this together like like the people on the big island you know you're all on that island like you say you can't simply drive to <laughs> Alaska. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so. yeah, it, it's, a, it's an interesting phenomenon because when I went to Graceland, I thought, there's not enough water here. <laughs> and, and it was just so much land. It was yeah. just, it was amazing, you know. But yeah, thank you. But thank you so much for including and inviting me. I, I just, I'm thrilled and honored and humbled and everything even though i have to get up at four, quarter to five in the morning you know? well anytime you're willing to do it we'll love to have you back happy to be here thank you and roger we wanted to say thank you for um you know a real i think barn burner <laughs> you, know, you know this kind of i mean a, a revival sermon in a way i felt like I, I was i was kind of thrilled through the whole thing as as you express this so well um this really core question of uh of the christian faith and and also the openness to the different ways that we can ponder the this you know not just any one way and also frankly the um the inspiration that you had for the poem which was really amazing yeah uh, i I always look forward to it. The Sunday service is, is always an inspiration for me. I, I'm usually behind the scenes with uh, Jerry and Mary Jean and, and, and Leandro and all those. Um, so I, I always am behind, but it's always nice to be out in front with everybody. And, and each of you are my inspiration, my fuel for the coming week. And I want to thank Daryl. Um, for being the, the chaplain minister for, for today. You always set the tone for us before, and lead us into uh, a wonderful worship setting. And it did for me, as you were going through that, especially that song of that girl. And, and so it, it does set the tone for us, where a lot of people watch, do not see that part of the worship service prior to this one. And Trudy, what I thought, uh, <laughs> What we could do is um, we're going to have a live service from Beyond the Walls in Hawaii. 
<laughs> and I thought we ought to be there. <laughs> <laughs> Live from Hawaii, and we will all go down and do the service with you. You're such a delight. And thank that would you be fun. Sure. We can do it at the beach. <laughs> yes. Oh, that would be wonderful. <laughs> Well, Daryl, I also want to I also want to thank you. Um, like like Roger says, uh, the, when people are joining us on the live stream, they don't they aren't aware of what goes in behind the scenes and what with the preparation that has gone into the service and uh, and what all the ministers have put into it, and also uh, the fact that we have uh, our ministers our minister to our minister in the ministers meeting, and and you uh, when you ever you are here. Uh, to perform that function for us as our chaplain, it is just a treat for us. Yes. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Uh, um, because I have a good wife, she <laughs> keeps my nose to the grindstone, and I learn a lot from her. I learn a lot from each of you folks. And Trudy, I want to mention to you, if you really want to get away from the land mass of, of central United States, come to Port Elgin, Ontario, or right by the lake. <laughs> Plenty of water. It looks like an ocean. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Um, I was going to ask, speaking of your wife, I was going to ask Mary Jean if we, um, about upcoming events. Um, I know that this is right now is the Canada West Mission Center Conference. And so that, that uh, we may be missing out on some of our folks in Western Canada. Um, and, but, uh, and we talked about the All Voices Conference. And uh, is there something else that I'm thinking of that we need to be announcing? Well, just our, our conference is coming up in October, October 23rd, 24th. Yes. And uh, so we'll be meeting up on Saturday for business. But before business, we're actually going to have a global village where participants are going to be able to sign in and then go off and visit um, different booths like World Accord or Soyanito or um, uh, some emerging congregations that are uh, got some interesting things happening and, and uh, all sorts of things. So come and do some visiting back and forth. We'll have some time over lunch to just share and visit with each other. Then we'll go into business in the afternoon and there will be an ordination during that ser that uh, uh, business meeting. And then our worship service will take place on the Sunday morning through Beyond the Walls as well. So, yeah. Well, excellent. So we're all looking forward to that here in Eastern Canada. And so yes. thank you so much. Yeah, so register on uh, our from our website. Uh, what is it? <laughs> is it is it cemconference.ca? Cemconference.ca. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Very good. <laughs> Thank you. Well, we don't always get the we don't always take the opportunity. We always have the opportunity, but we don't always take the opportunity to thank Jerry. Jerry serves as one of the producers of uh, the Beyond the Walls service, and there is so much that goes into this, and what. Um, What's wonderful for, for me is to have people like Jerry who are complete self-starters, who take uh, responsibility and are able to uh, take charge of their component of the service and are so totally reliable, um, even when I'm so distracted that I can't even pay all the attention that I'm supposed to be paying to even help or give input to those components. And um, Jerry, heartfelt thanks to you uh, for what you bring to our ministry. It truly is my joy, and we've got a, a great tech team that I am here to support, and we're always looking for additional volunteers. So if you um, are interested in helping with either Facebook or YouTube uh, or Zoom, um, it is, it's hard. There's, there's a, a small group of us, so we don't often get breaks. <laughs> so it would be nice to build a little bit more of a, of a team. So um, if you email um, Leandro, um, Leandro can get the information to me and we can train you up on how to do this. Um, it really is fairly um, straightforward. Um, you really can't mess it up too much. So if you have um, a desire to serve um, in a technical aspect, um, we would be more than happy to have you join our small little team here. And it is just a joy to be part of this um, every week um, behind the scenes. And I'll be in front of the camera here in a couple of weeks. So I look yeah. forward to serving with you all then too. Very, very exciting. Thank you very much. And yes, thanks to anyone who is who might feel like the call to help out on our technology team, on our translation team. 
Um, as Jerry says, you can email info at centerplace.ca, uh, right? Leandro is the email address. And, uh, and we'll just check in with Leandro. How are we doing? Are we going to get up to 50, uh, 50 testimony lines so that we can submit this to the Herald? <laughs> I, I think so. I think I've seen more than 50, but we'll, we'll see. We'll, we'll count. But if you haven't yet, today we invite you to add your line to our share testimony. And you simply have to fill in the blank. Jesus, I testify that you are. So in your own words, who is Jesus. Can you say who Jesus is in your own words? Just fill in the blank and we'll compile everything. And if we have more than 50 responses, we'll send it to the Herald. So yeah, we don't control do the Herald, so we won't know that it's going to go we or not, know, but we'll, but we'll ask so We'll, we'll nice. ask kindly. <laughs> and uh, congratulations to the choir. I think it's probably our best song to date, arguably. So. Yeah, it was amazing. You, you guys did a great job with that one. That was hard. Someone yeah. said, Leandro, why do you always have to pick the hardest uh, hymns in the hymnal? And that's why, because you guys can sing it. So, yeah, great job. And it really, well, it crowned the service as the capstone of the service. And it really uh, brought that spirit that had been building this entire time and that message together. Thank you, choir. Thank you for this ministry. All right, thanks all of you. Let's wave and, and say goodbye. And we appreciate everyone who is part of Beyond the Walls.